Life, oh life. Life, oh life. In life, you can never change the story of a child. What God has destined for everybody will definitely come to pass. No matter how hard anyone tries. You remember the story of Mary Musa, a seven-year-old who was whose eyes were plucked out by her auntie. Yes, we took this story some months ago on Against All Odds. I really do not know why Mary's auntie did what she did. I do not even care to know. But you see, all that is in the past now. Few weeks ago, we actually covered Mary Musa's wedding. Yes, Mary Musa. A seven-year-old girl whose eyes was plucked out by her auntie and left to die. That was the intention, to kill her. So her dreams, her aspiration, and her life will all end just like that. But the God who created her said, no, you can't sniff out the life that I have created. And today, we're here to celebrate Mary Musa. What can God not do? Here in my hands is a book she wrote. And you know what? She launched this book on the day of her wedding. She titles it, Rebranded. Indeed, God has rebranded Mary Musa. The program is against all odds on the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And my name is Dushma Pius Ikirave. I'll just like you to stay with us on this program today and let's sail with you through it all, giving you a little bit of refreshing on how we met Mary Musa, how we spoke to her mom, and of course, how her wedding went. Don't go away. We will be back very shortly. And I, and I, and I. Baby, your beauty is so natural. In a world often marred by adversity, we present to you the extraordinary journey of Mary Musa Omoyemi, a testament to resilience, forgiveness, and the indomitable human spirit. Mary Musa, born on the 23rd day of November 1993, into a world filled with challenges, Mary emerged. Mary faced adversity head on and emerged as a beacon of hope and inspiration. At the tender age of seven, strategy struck Mary's life when her own aunt perpetrated an unthinkable act. She pulled out Mary's eyes forever, changing the course of her life. Mary's path to discovery was not without its trials and tribulations. This traumatic event could have defined her existence but Mary refused to let darkness consume her spirit. This is against all odds. I was about seven years then when I was attending um, my elementary school was St. Mary's private school at the time on the island in Lagos. You know, we were living on the island in Lagos. And then just before this incident, we had moved to the mainland. And whilst we were on the mainland, um, usually whenever, my, my mom was also working on the island. So whenever she was going to work in the morning, mm -hmm. she would take me with her and then drop me off at school or the school bus would come and get me from her office. But this time around, because of course I was already on holiday, there was no need for all of that. And, you know, I was a handful as a child, really. And my mom wasn't ready to <laughs> juggle between taking care of me and doing her work. So she just left me in bed and went to work that day. And little did she know that she would be returning to meet a different Mary, a different daughter. When she left, the house, you know, uh, was comprised uh of me, my mom, my uncle, and my grandma. But this time, my uncle and my, and my mother had gone to work on the island, so it was just left with me. Um, this is my aunt who was supposed to be taking care of me and my grandma. 
And then when they left, when you know, I was still sleeping. All I remember really was the door of my mother's room thrusting open, you know, so violently. And there she stood, you know, looking so fierce. I was petrified as a child. I didn't understand. I didn't even know what to process. I was just waking up also, remember? So she told me to leave there, and it was a roller coaster around the house. You know, go here, go to your grandma's room, then go to your uncle's room, then go here, then go there. Eventually, I landed in my uncle's room, to cut the long story short. And then she said she was coming, she left me there. And I heard sounds, you know, like someone was suffocating and kind of screaming for help. So I, I, I wanted to go there to check, you know, what was going on with my grandma and then I, I saw that her hand was on her chest and of course that, that would terrify any seven year old so I, I let out a shout and she came at me, it was like that just filled her anger. She came at me, she charged at me and then took me into my uncle's room and locked the door. So I was in there until she was done with whatever was going on out and then she came back in to meet me. When she came in, you know, she um, started pacing around my uncle's room looking for something. As a child, I, of course, I was apprehensive, but I didn't know how to pacify this very angry woman. And so I asked her, you know, what she was looking for. She told me she was looking for a knife. So I, I, I of course, helped her. And um, because we were in my uncle's room, my uncle happened to be a very health-conscious person who would normally take you know, just fruits whenever he came back from work. So because of that, he almost permanently had this uh, table fruit knife, you know, on his table. And I remember it was blue, the color, the, the color of the knife was blue. So we went there, I mean, both of us were standing by the table and <clears throat> I saw the knife and I wanted to tell her that this is the knife. I remember opening my mouth to say, but I couldn't voice it out. So I couldn't say nothing. So while I was standing there and she was standing there and she was looking at me and I was looking at her and looking at the table, she didn't see the knife on the table and that just made her really angry. You know, she probably thought I was trying to mess with her. And then she said, okay, if she doesn't get a knife, she's going to deal with me with her hands. But I still couldn't process that, you know, how could I? I thought it was going to be something this grave, you know. And then she took me by my hair, you know, threw me up the ceiling, like held me up the ceiling. She was standing on my uncle's bed and dropped me to the floor, slammed my head severally on the burglary. I was bloodshot. After, I mean, this, this was a whole drama going on, you know. I'm just trying to summarize it. But after a while, she now put me in between her legs, you know, the position when you want to make a child's hair yes. while she was sitting on the bed. And then while she did that, she started dipping her fingers in my eyes until both eyes, you know, just popped out of their sockets, suspended by uh, maybe a nerve or a thread or something, just dangling down my two cheeks. And, you know, she left me in my pool of blood and, and left the house. And um, people would later see her and, you know, suspected something was going on. And they came to the house, they knocked. I heard them, but because I was dying, I was losing blood. I couldn't really do nothing. I was hoping that my grandma would hear. I didn't know that my grandma had been hypnotized into a very deep sleep. So she too didn't hear. And, you know, the generator and a lot of things, noise was going on. So even the neighbors didn't hear me when I was screaming and struggling. After a while, you know, they went around the house and, you know, the things that we used to complain about, such as like my grandma, my grandma, you know, blessed memory, she used to snore so deeply. But that was my saving grace that day because it was the snore that the people heard and they knew that somebody was at home. And so they, they turned, they traced it to my grandma's window and broke it. And that was when my grandma, you know, just... Uh, jumped out of sleep. She was like, who's that? A thief, thief. They're like, there are no thieves that she should come to the door to open the door. And she opened the door. She saw a mini crowd. She's like, what's going on here? And they said, who is at home with her? She mentioned my auntie's name and she mentioned my name. They said, okay, 
called them out. She called my auntie. There was no response. And then she said, okay, maybe my aunt had gone to the market. And they said, okay, what about Mary? And then she called me out. There was no response. I heard her though, but you know, I was weak this time. And she said, okay, maybe Mary has gone with her to, to the market. And they insisted. They said, no, Mary did not go with her to the market. Mary must be inside. So she kept calling and calling. I knew at this time I had to muster all the strength I had in me, you know, to just answer that call. And when I did, my grandma was upset. She's like, you know, I grew up in a very Christian home. Well, you heard me calling your name and you kept quiet. And I said, you know, that this has happened and um, I'm not able to see, so I cannot come out. And my mom was upset. What do you mean? My, I mean, my grandma was upset. What do you mean you cannot see? So the people there said, you know, just go in and check on this girl. And then she came in and saw me in my pool of blood. And, um, you know, she fainted. They resuscitated her. And before he knew it, we, we were on our way to the hospital. The closest hospital to us was General Hospital Ikeja. And that was where I was admitted. I've learned a lot. Even now. When anybody called me, maybe he's maybe it's fine, maybe he's doing fine. Even when they like to try to get information from me about her, she's fine, she's doing fine. Because I trusted them too much. I so relaxed. And they taught me a lesson I will never forget in my life. Though I have forgiven. Mm. I have forgiven. But the lesson is there. I learned this in a very hard way. In a very hard way. What I will say is that uh, for every other parent out there, you must take care of your child or your children. No matter who you, don't trust and don't entrust your child to anybody. Say, please, if not even in this era, not even in this era. In our own time, it was different. But now it was entirely different. Don't entrust your child to anybody. Say, please help me take care. I, I trust him or I trust her. Please take care of her or take care of him for me. Don't do it. This is against all odds. <laughs> Today, against all odds, Mary is set to embark on a new chapter, a celebration of love and triumph. I met Mary before I met Mary. I was on a panel with her when 
she told her incredible story. Today she's a lawyer and a wife and soon to be a mother like me. Amen. I am celebrating Mary. What a beautiful woman and a handsome husband. I'm glad that in spite of four weddings, I still managed to run into this one wow. and then run into another one. I'm delighted that I could make it and I'm glad that everybody is here to celebrate you. My tailor didn't do my asher anywhere and I didn't get the scarf. So because of that, I look a little awkward and I have the whole ensemble except the scarf. Mary, I love you. Victor, I love you. Please look after Mary for us. We know she will look after you. God bless you all. Well, I connected to the group. I saw something that she posted about men. She said um, she didn't like her idea of men or her notion of what she believes about men was not actually, I didn't approve of it. So the very first statement she made got me angry and I responded. I said, woman, with this kind of mentality, no man will, will get married to you. No man will marry you. But today, that same sp statement I made has become nothing because the same man who said no man will marry her ended up to become her husband. She's electrifying. She's angelic. She's golden. Everything good is what she is. Um, if you have never seen an angel, that flows with fragrance of favor and grace. If you see her, you don't need to look for any other angel. She's the one. is a dream come true not not because I'm getting married but because I'm getting married to the man that the Lord has appointed for me so it's not just about the marriage it's about the person with whom I'm entering the marriage with so I am I'm extremely grateful to God for such a beautiful gift my husband I like the fact that he fears God truly He's, he's a lover of God. It's not, it's, not, it's not a cliche. It's not the, I want a man who loves God. No, 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 no. He loves God. His fear for God is palpable. I, I learned it from him. I'm the hot stubbornness. He's the cold stubbornness. So at the end of the day, we are both stubborn. <laughs> we just, we demonstrate it in different ways. <laughs> Mary was a former student of Babcock University and she studied law. The first person with a sight challenge, blind student, to come to Babcock and the setup was quite challenging for the university but with things from the student support services, we were able to put things in place for her to be able to successfully go through her legal program. Extremely happy because we followed her for the last 12 years since she left school.
and we know that it took the grace of God and for her to find a husband like uh, Victor in this time is only the grace of God and we are happy for both of them that they could be able to make it to this point. Mary Musa Omoyemi's journey from darkness to light is an inspiration to us all. In the face of unimaginable challenges, she has proved that love, resilience, and the human spirit can triumph. Today, we celebrate not only a wedding, but a victory of indomitable spirit. Be not just for Mary, I'm happy for her husband, Victor. And like I said in church, Victor is not doing Mary a favor. He is highly favored marrying Mary. Her in-laws is not out of pity because I'm sure they can see today that Mary is loved. Mary has a community. Mary has a value chain. She has a DNA that raises a pedigree of personalities around her that people would pay, position, hustle, just to be connected with or connected to. But Mary's favor just comes from the simplicity of her being who she is. She's still vulnerable. So happy for Victor that he found a treasure like Mary. And I'm so happy for Mary too, that God has blessed her with a husband like Victor. So for the two of them, I just wish them heaven on earth. The best is yet to come. Congratulations. Found S, and what do we have? Jesus! Who is the King of Kings? Who is the Lord of Lords? Who is the King of Heaven? The Master of the Universe? The one who's going to be your marriage? Jesus! As Mary launches rebranded, she not only shares her life story but offers a roadmap for those navigating their own challenges. A story of transformation, resilience, and the enduring power of the human spirit. I also wish them that Jesus, they will carry Jesus along with them in all their doings. He said, with Jesus in the family, happy, happy people. With Jesus, without Jesus, no family. Christ is our cornerstone. On him alone we build. So I pray for that and I wish them that Christ will be their cornerstone. Christ will be in the boat of this family. That God is about, that God has already started. I wish them well. And I pray for them that nine months time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mary's journey took an inspiring turn as she embraced her newfound purpose. She became a mentor and advocate for persons with disabilities in Nigeria, dedicating her life to ensuring they receive the support, respect, and opportunities they rightfully deserve. This is Against All Odds. Oh my God. I don't know if you've been smiling as much as I have been smiling and just thanking God for who he is. Mary looked so beautiful in her wedding attire. Of course, her traditional dress. She looked so wonderful. Ah, you are never so broken that God can't make something beautiful out of you. These are her words. You are never so broken that God can't make something beautiful out of you. Are you ready for God to do that for you? Something also cuts me here. Hmm. The alabaster box always holds precious oil. Are you an alabaster box? What have you decided to make out of your broken life? The shattered pieces of your life. Are you ready to put it together and move on? Or are you ready to shatter? and let the pieces just scatter. What do you want for yourself? Who is telling you to break down and go off? My dear, start up again. Hold God and the future will be something you'll be proud of. Against all odds crew, congratulate Mary Musa and her husband. We wish you so much love. 
and happiness. The future holds great things. Remember, you are an alabaster box and you hold oil. Thank you for staying with us. Let's do this again next week. Same time, same station. My name, Doshima Pius Ikirabi. Bye-bye.